Namaskar my dear students. Today in the quick review section, we will be discussing a very very important topic that is occlusion in complete denture. You know it is often asked in the theory exam as a long question or a short question. And many questions are picked from this topic in the viva and also as the multiple choice questions. So let's begin. Now before proceeding, let us be familiar with the two important terms, the two important definitions. First is dental occlusion. What is dental occlusion? It is the static relationship between the incising or the masticating surfaces of the maxillary or mandibular teeth or the tooth analogues. And the second is dental articulation. Now this is the static and the dynamic contact relationship. You know, this is the difference with the dental occlusion. It is the dynamic contact relationship between the occlusal surfaces of the teeth during function. So these two definitions are often asked in the viva. Now let us compare the natural teeth occlusion with the artificial occlusion. Please note, this comes as a short note also in the theory exam. If we talk about the natural teeth, each natural tooth, it functions independently and disperses the occlusal load. While it functions as a group in artificial teeth or a danger and the occlusal loads are not individually managed. Second, the malocclusion if present in the natural teeth may not cause problem for a long time. But the malocclusion in the artificial teeth in a danger, it may pose immediate drastic problems. Third, the non-vertical forces, they are well tolerated by the natural teeth. But the non-vertical forces in a denture, it may damage the supporting tissues or may cause the dislodgement of the denture. Then incising or biting with the interior teeth, it does not affect the posterior teeth in case of the natural dentition. While if we try to bite or incise with the denture, it may lift the posterior part of the denture. The next is the second molar region. In the natural teeth, it acts as a favored area for heavy mastication for better leverage and power. While the heavy force in the artificial teeth in a denture in the second molar area, it can tilt or shift the denture base. The premolar area, the center of the denture, it can take the force well. Now the bilateral balance, it is not necessary whether it acts as an interference in natural teeth. But the bilateral balance is mandatory to produce the denture stability. Then if, if there is any occlusal prematurity in natural teeth, the proprioceptive impulses are there to give the feedback. But in a denture, there is no feedback. The denture rests in the centric relation. So if there is any occlusal prematurity, patient will often complain that the denture becomes loose when chewing. Next, we come to the requirements of the complete denture occlusion. Very important. The first requirement is the stability of the denture and its occlusion when the mandible is in both centric and eccentric relation. Second is the balanced occlusal contacts. You know, there should be at least tripod contacts during all the eccentric movements. Third is control of horizontal forces. We can do this by decreasing the cuspal height. This will control the horizontal forces. Next is the functional liver. Okay, the functional liver balance, it can be maintained by the vertical tooth to ridge crest relationship. Okay, this will be favorable for the liver balance. Then cutting, penetrating, shearing efficiency of the occlusal surface is very important. It should simulate the natural teeth. And this can be done by using the anatomic or the cusp teeth. Last is the interior incisal clearance, you know, during all the posterior masticatory function. This we can give by giving proper overjet and the overbite. If we talk about the occlusal schemes in complete denture, we can give three occlusal schemes. First is the balanced occlusion. Second is the monoplane occlusion. And third is the lingualized occlusion. So let us discuss them one by one. First is the bilateral balanced occlusion. It is a very important occlusal scheme given in the complete denture, very commonly given and it comes as a separate short note also. 
okay so uh, first what type of teeth are used the anatomic teeth with 33 degree cuspal angle is used in the bilateral balanced occlusion second these anatomic teeth they are arranged in maximum intercuspation maximum interdigitation and centric relation Coming to the movements, the anatomic teeth, they are arranged in such a way that buccal cusp contact should be there during the protrusive movement. You know, this simultaneous contact during the protrusion is known as the protrusive balance. It helps in stability of the denture. Then the anatomic teeth, they should uh, be arranged that they should uh, be able to contact on the working movement as well as they should show contact in the balancing movement and they should not interfere with the uh, working movement. Okay, so giving the simultaneous contact on both the working and the balancing side, it improves the stability of the denture and it is known as the liver balance. Now we can understand the definition nicely that the bilateral balanced occlusion in this the simultaneous contacting of the maxillary and the mandibular teeth on the right and the left side in the posterior and the interior occlusal areas in centric and eccentric position. So that means there will always be contact in this type of occlusal scheme. Why this is done? It is developed to lessen or limit the tipping or rotating of the denture bases in relation to the supporting structures. Coming to the advantages of balanced occlusion, first as we have just discussed that it will improve the stability and the retention of the denture bases as we are giving simultaneous contact on both the sides in working as well as the non-working movements. Second, it will reduce soreness and resorption which is caused by the denture base movement because there will be minimal movement. Okay, we are giving a bilateral balance. So the scope of movement is less. It will be very comfortable to the patient because uh, the balance is maintained and along with the chewing efficiency which is maintained in the dentures. Now coming to the factors that affect the bilateral balanced occlusion, there are five factors known as Hanau's squint, incisal guidance, condylar guidance, plane of occlusion, compensating curves and the cuspal angle. These are very important. This comes as a separate short note on Hanau squint. Uh, so I'm sharing you the link. There is a separate video on Hanau squint in detail. After we have discussed the balanced occlusion, the next occlusal scheme is the monoplane occlusion. Monoplane occlusion, uh, the definition first of all that it is an occlusal arrangement wherein the posterior teeth, they have masticatory surfaces that lack any cuspal height. So there will be no cusp. So what type of teeth we are using in monoplane? We are using zero degree teeth. Uh, cuspal angle is zero or we say them cuspless or non-anatomic teeth. Okay, their uh, arrangement is relatively simple as compared to the bilateral balance because there will be no maximal intercuspation in this kind of occlusion. The plane of occlusion, it is uh, set parallel to the residual ridges to maintain the stability. There will be no compensating curves. Okay, the teeth are set flat in this type of occlusal scheme. Mainly this concept was used to reduce the lateral forces, okay, acting during the masticatory movements. Mm -hmm. Coming to the indications of the monoplane occlusion, monoplane occlusion is mainly given where we have to reduce the lateral or the horizontal forces. So they are mainly indicated in flat ridge cases where there is highly ridge resorption, second where there is abnormal jaw relations uh, and third where there is difficulty in recording the exact centric relation point. Okay, so there we can go for the monoplane. Advantages, first there is freedom of occlusal movements from the centric to the eccentric jaw positions. Second, there is elimination of lateral forces which can actually destabilize the danger. 
okay third when there is denture settling which is taking place due to the denture abuse there will be no cuspal interference so these are the advantages uh, of the monoplane and coming to the limitations of the disadvantages first is there is less efficiency in mastication because we are using non anatomic or the zero degree teeth second aesthetically limited because the curvatures of the cusp are absent and third uh, due to these uh this this advantages they are less compliant to the patient the third occlusal scheme is the lingualized occlusion uh, which is used in the complete denture lingualized occlusion this concept was introduced by alfred geise in 1927 then sh pain in 1941 he gave the cusp to fossa occlusion pound he gave the term lingualized occlusion what is lingualized occlusion uh, lingualized occlusion is defined as the form of the denture occlusion that articulates the maxillary lingual or the maxillary palatal cusp with the mandibular occlusal surfaces as we can see in the picture in the centric working and non working mandibular positions so there is a buccal clearance in this type of the occlusal scheme principles of the lingualized occlusion first what type of teeth we are using we are using anatomic teeth in the maxillary arch that is 30 to 33 degree which will oppose the non anatomic teeth in the mandibular or the lower arch this involves the use of large upper palatal cusp against the wide lower central fossa okay the buccal cusp they are kept out of contact there is a buccal clearance in this type of occlusion the selective grinding of the mandibular posterior teeth is uh, most of the time it is necessary for the smooth gliding movement of the upper cusp in the lower fossa in this scheme the forces are directed towards the lingual side and this improves the stability of the lower denture okay as the upper large palatal uh, cusp it falls in the fossa so it is also described as the mortar and the pestle effect indications of lingualized occlusion first is the severe alveolar resorption that is flat ridges second class 2 or any other abnormal jaw relationships third displaceable supporting tissues then when a complete denture it opposes a removable partial denture there also we prefer the lingualized occlusion when a more favorable stress distribution is desired uh, with the patient with a para functional habits then also we prefer the lingualized occlusion now you will notice that indications of monoplane and lingualized are almost the same so we prefer lingualized in those cases because it offers better aesthetics and better chewing efficiency as compared to the monoplane now let us just quickly summarize and compare all the three occlusal schemes in complete denture first if we talk about aesthetics balanced occlusion will give better aesthetics because we are using cusp teeth lingualized will also give good aesthetics but the monoplane will not offer good aesthetics third ease of penetration it will be best with the balanced because we are using upper and lower cusp teeth in maximal intercuspation it will be uh, good in lingualized but the penetration will not be good in monoplane as we are using cusplate teeth simpler technique lingualized and monoplane the teeth arrangement is comparatively easy as compared to the balanced occlusion where we have to arrange the teeth in maximal intercuspation and do the balancing decrease lateral forces the lateral forces will be decreased with a decrease in the cuspal height that will occur in lingualized and monoplane ease of adjustment obviously it will be much ease uh, for lingualized and monoplane as compared to the bilateral balanced occlusion good for class 2 and class 3 cases lingualized and monoplane are mainly indicated for such kind of jaw relations class 2 and class 3 good stability will be offered by lingualized and monoplane because they are decreasing the lateral or the horizontal forces so that's all for this topic today i hope all the three occlusal schemes are clear to you you can give your topics in the comment section i will try to cover them in the next videos do not forget to share and like the video 
wish you success today and always